Welcome back. There's nothing more any of us loves than a good story. And a good story can often be traced back to who you were as a child, especially if it's your story. I know for me, my personal story starts with receiving my first makeup kit when I was three, my first hair client when I was four, and then fast forward 30 years and I'm in business school creating my image business. So our next guest has a similar story because she was an audience member at the Mike Douglas show when she was 14. And she saw a, an unknown woman carrying a clipboard. She had no idea what this woman did, but it looked cool. And she said to herself, I'm going to do that someday. Mm -hmm. And boy, if she didn't do that someday, and she did it for none other than Oprah. So Sally Lou Loveman is with us today. Sally, I don't, Sally Lou, I don't want to uh, keep you off screen a second longer because I know now everybody's just dying to know your story well, and Lauren, I'm gonna let you tell it. I love that you told your story because we didn't discuss that before. And I love that, like, I already feel just like this connection with you to know that you had something that came into your life at a young age that you viscerally connected with that later became your career. I'm so interested in all of that all the time. It's just, that's exactly what happened to me. And so I, I now have something in my eye. Isn't that funny? Like all of a sudden, okay, it's yeah. Um, but I, I love that. And our stories, when they are visceral that way, you know, the, 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 the senses, you know, the, the, the feeling, the seeing, the touching, the hearing, the smelling, all of that. Like, I know you can put yourself right back in that space and now look at, you know, you don't know it as it's happening, but to look back and say that happened and that's why I'm here. And that's what I love to do. I love to connect people, mostly women <laughs> are my clients, but I, I love to connect women to their core story, to the moment that everything changed, to the moment that everything became more clear. For me, it was when my mother invited me to the Mike Douglas show. I was 14. I could have said no. I had a million reasons why I didn't want to go. I had no interest in it at all. And yet I went, thank goodness. And in that moment, I saw this woman, like you said, on the set. And I'm like, I want to do that. And had I said no to that invitation from my mother, I would have never known that a television career could be for me. And that was it. Like I was off to the races. I studied television. I interned in television. I, I got this phenomenal opportunity in Chicago, uh, right out of college, which just so happens to be the same year Oprah Winfrey um, moved to Chicago as well. So everything started to align. And, you know, when I saw that woman in 1976, first of all, she was a woman. So that was important. I never thought about the, 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 the bigness of it all. You know, I didn't, I didn't think of the, of, of, of the enormity of it. I just thought that I want to do that. That looks good. And to think that, 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 that ticket, that ticket that I have still to this day is, was literally my ticket to my career. That just gives me goosebumps. And that gives me confidence and I carry that story with me in my back pocket, in my heart, in my soul. And it gives me great, great confidence that fear cannot access. And so this is what I work with people having had a front row seat to these powerful stories on the Oprah show that impacted my heart. And of course, millions of viewers hearts. I, I really wanted to help people connect to their own stories so that they could feel that confidence and they could go out and speak their story, connect with others and change people's lives and, and also change their own. So that's really kind of what I'm doing. Well, on two levels, you're doing it on so many levels, but two <laughs> specifically that I want to point to right now, because when you say there are you know no mistakes, if you are willing to look back and see the seed of the moment right. that you're in, then you know where your story sprouts from. And right. that's that's the fastest way forward. But the fact that you promote love and that your your company is Love Speaks and yeah. 
and your name is Loveman. I mean, yeah. seriously, how many little hints did you have to get yeah. you know, to realize that you didn't need to be hit on the head? Yeah. Well, also, my father was a physician and um, and I and I would see him interact with his patients, his staff, his inter, you know, everybody. And he made them feel so important. And I, it, the, the few times I went to the hospital with him, I felt like I was traveling with a rock star. For me, I knew medicine was never going to please any one of my five senses. And, and I wasn't smart or bra- smart enough or brave enough to be a doctor. But that impact of seeing him touching people's lives was, as well as the experience of being in the television studio, it's like I combined both childhood events and said, oh, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work. I'm going to change people's lives through television. But little did I know that Oprah Winfrey would be the vehicle in which I would do that, you know? And like, when I look back on it, like my dad is as much Oprah as Oprah is Oprah. Like he was that person for so many and his, his, he, he still his he lives on in so many people's lives. And so I think it was no accident. And I, I think it's very cool to see the seed. None of us see the seed when it's happening Never. and we have to grow it. We have to nourish it. We have to water it. We have to work really hard. We have to be brave. We have to try. We have to fail. And, and then all of a sudden you have a book because you're like, oh, I did all these things. And now I see why. And to me, that gives every single human confidence. I always say like fear has no access when we're in our purpose. So when we know our purpose, when we know that we want to help people with their image through beauty or through speaking or through whatever it might be, that's where you all, anybody watching, you, me, and anybody watching, feels power. And that is why I believe our stories are our superpower. They are the engine for which we go through life with like, I know who I am. You know, your tagline is the business of being you. That's really what I'm, that's what I talk about. It's like, what's my takeaway from this book? To enjoy who you are, to be ridiculously just like, be your own cheerleader to say, this is who I am. And I'm proud of it. I'm not perfect but I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. And yes, it is my life and I've lived it. And yes, now I can share the story. And to your point, our, our story is our superpower. And I'm going to go you one sideways here because like your dad, mine was the pharmacist. So he was Doc Solomon. And oh. this was when people would go to the pharmacist. My grandfather before him was also Doc Solomon. Oh, so cool. I grew up in the pharmacy watching them take care of people. Oh. And took a test in the 11th grade that said I should be, uh, I always thought I'd be an international litigator. That was what I always wanted to do. My family were all medical doctors. I wasn't into that. Um, But at 11th grade, they told me I should be a social worker, an attorney, or a florist, to which my brother quickly nudged me and said, you know, that requires physical labor. Not your thing. (laughs) Hey, honesty is a good thing. (laughs) But when you look at what I do, yeah. Social work, I impact people's lives. Totally. Law, I influence through logic and communication right. and the same way you do through speaking. Right. And the flowers were the beauty part because, yep. of course, every client like you, they come to me as this tight little bud. They're yep. not sure what they're going to look like yet. Right. And then as they bloom and, they and yep. then you leave a perfect bloom. So the it story. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Right. Stories yeah. just and the fact that and your I story think, of your superpower that that's a great line. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I also really one one message I really want to get to any woman of any age is to really own your talent because I think if any woman that doesn't uh your talent, if you don't know what your talent is, just know that whatever people compliment you on all the time, that's your talent. Right. And like for me, when I was a little girl, I loved making puzzles. I didn't I didn't like when things didn't fit. I like when things fit neatly together. I didn't like when there was a missing piece and I love decorating like a pretty table or setting a table. And I realized that when I was seating the Oprah show audience and any audience in television I've ever sat, I just sat one in Qatar um, in the Middle East, which was phenomenal. 
I'm decorating and I'm making a puzzle and I'm making it pretty and I'm putting the colors and the energy in this and I don't want an empty seat. I don't want a missing piece. And it's like, oh, that's my talent. I'm really good at putting things together, connecting people and making it pretty. And so I will own that every day of the week. I'm not good at budgets or geography or, you know, tech, but I'm really good at this connection piece. And I believe that if I were to say to you, if you were to say to me, Sally, well, you're such a good connector. And I would say, thank you. I know. And how are you? What, what is your talent? That is what we should be doing because then I am helping. I'm serving. I think it's a disservice to women to when women don't own their talent, because the woman standing in front of you may just need the talent you have. And you're the person that can help them. So I think that's absolutely right. And we're often shy about it, or we've been exactly. taught not to overshare, right. we've been taught not to talk about ourselves. So Correct. when someone comes to you, how, how, what's, you know, how does it work with you? Because I, for, personally, I could totally just, you know, sit with my coffee with you all day long. We could <laughs> do it for hours, but I really know that our viewers among our viewers are those people who are ready to tell their stories, ready to yeah. share their stories. And I know they're looking for the right person to do it with. And here you are. So Right. Tell well, you know, it works. and your story doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't have to be a blog. It never has to see the light of day. I think it's a gift to yourself to write it for yourself. And it's certainly a gift to your family. There's so many questions that we end up saying, wait, we don't know the answers to because that generation is gone. It's such a gift. And, you know, I started my business when the Oprah Winfrey show ended, I started it really doing exactly what I had done at Oprah, but for other audiences. So people would hire me to either speak or to host or MC uh, an event to bring the audience and connect that audience to the brand. And then, especially with COVID, um, I, I had to, you know, shift and pivot. And so I do more coaching now with women, which I love. And so it's, two things. It's either um, a woman founder who's starting a business who says, I don't know how to tell my story. And then we sit and it's like therapy. You know, we get to the, to the nitty gritty. Like I would find, you know, uh, you know, I worked with a, a young, a young woman who is starting this boutique hotel chain. And she said, when she traveled uh, with her parents as a young girl, she would sit in the lobby and she would tell her parents, I want to live in this hotel. You know, the, those are the stories and the stories you just told and um, my story of my clipboard woman. And, you know, these are the things that we remember. And so I help women sort of build that so that you can relate. Like, for instance, like you, you heard me talk about my dad. Well, your dad wasn't a doctor, but he was a pharmacist. So it's, you know, he could have been anything or my dad could have been anything. The minute I speak about my dad, you're thinking about yours. So it's, that's the exchange. And that's the, the way we viscerally connect with each other. It gets the oxytocin going in our blood and suddenly we are connected. It's what Oprah was, you know, is phenomenal at doing. It's why her show was so successful because we were all connecting. The other thing I help people with is people who are literally scared to speak in public. It's the number one fear people have. And for me, I don't know why I got the bypass from that. Like, I don't know why, because I'm literally scared of everything else, like airplanes, boats, bridges, you know, tunnels, subways, self-park parking lots. I'm scared of everything, but I'm not scared of that. And I think it's because I'm so grounded in my story and, and it doesn't, you know, people could look and go, of course, you love your story. It's great. You knew you saw a woman with a, with a clipboard. You had parents that loved you. You worked for Oprah. Yeah, I get that. I, I a privilege and grateful. But I also have had a lot of hard parts of my story. And it's the hard parts that I actually love the most. Because that's where, whew, oh, like the growth is phenomenal. So I help people you know, get in, in touch with what it is that's keeping them from being scared to speak. And I'll just say this, I don't believe that people are scared to stand in front of an audience. I believe they're scared to stand in front of themselves. And so I believe that when we really do the deep dive and really get to know who we are, that is when we have no fear of speaking and everyone deserves 
to speak without fear because we all have opportunities. You know, not everyone's going to be a keynote speaker, but everyone will have an opportunity to toast a loved one at an event and you don't want to crumble, right? I mean, Absolutely. there's no reason for it. Absolutely true. And I, I remember being shocked. I presented my dad with an award once um, and the co biggest comment was, oh my gosh, your daughter spoke with no ums or ahs. Yeah. I right. literally didn't have any fillers. I was like, wow. Right. Okay. Right. That's what they took away. <laughs> uh, you know, it's amazing what people take away. If, if, if we are human, when we speak, if we have vulnerability, if we do a self-deprecating thing, if we engage our audience, all these things I've had, I've had audiences come up to me and said, Oh, I really love the way you said, God bless you to the person who sneezed. I'm like, that's your takeaway. <laughs> and the point is like you, like, it's like, just be human. It doesn't just because you're speaking doesn't mean you can't have your regular human right. manners, right? That's what makes the event more enjoyable and more connection. And, and, and someone told me when I first started my business that a speaker's job is for, for them to want to make their audience, to make their audience want to take them home. And <laughs> I love that. Right. And so no one wants to take home anyone who hasn't shared a piece of their soul, you know? And so that's really, you know, Brene Brown has it down, you know, I, I've seen her in person on our shows and I've seen her speak and I've read her books and I love her. And it's, all about vulnerability because we are, we all, no, none of us are impervious to um, vulnerability. Like we all have that ability. And when we do that, that's where the power is. And when you find that girlfriend who can help you bring that forward. Oh yes. Whether it becomes a book or it becomes recorded videos for your grandchildren, it exactly. doesn't matter. Exactly. You're absolutely right. So exactly. tell me, Sally Lou, where can they find you and how can they get your book? Well, we I I live on Instagram mostly. I'm I'm not really on Facebook as much, but at Live Love Speaks at um on Instagram. And um I am on my website is Love Speaks. L O V E S P E A K S because I believe love speaks.com because I believe when something you love speaks to you, that is the something you should be doing just like you and me. That is, you know. that is the perfect, the perfect wrap up for us. And thank yeah. you so much for making the time. Welcome. I know you're still jet lagging from your Middle Eastern trip. I'm so grateful to you for being jet lagging. Jet -lagging. I mean, like I said, at 61, it's a little different. The jet lag lasts up just a little bit longer, like another week. I'll but be you better next look week. marvelous. And thank, thank you, you so much for you. sharing with us. Thank you for having me on Good Day Orange County. <laughs> it's our pleasure. And we'll be right back.